Okay, so in this video we're going to continue to look at data transformation, this time the reciprocal transformation. So we can apply the transformation either to the x variable or the y variable. And so we get y equals 1 over x or 1 over y equals x. Um, and obviously other coefficients involved in there as well. Again, this is a compressing transformation. So it has a similar effect to the log transformation. So in most cases where you might think about applying a log transformation, you could also apply a reciprocal transformation. And so sometimes you might need to test which one actually gives you um, the stronger coefficient of determination. So hence which one is the better transformation for that data. As I said, usually in an exam, um, you will be instructed as to which transformation to apply. Um, but in the next video, we'll have a look at, you know, making that decision. Okay, so let's first of all have a look at the Y versus 1 on X transformation. So as I said before, reciprocal means, um, so when we talk about taking the reciprocal of a fraction, um, it is flipping the fraction. So if the fraction is A divided by B, it becomes the reciprocal of that is b divided by a. Okay, so if our fraction is two thirds, the reciprocal of that, sorry, is three over two. If the fraction is one half, the reciprocal of that is two over one, which is two. If the fraction is three, the reciprocal of three, well, three is three over one, so it becomes one over three. Okay, so instead of having x, we have one over x. That is the reciprocal. Okay, so um, temperature was recorded every hour after 6 p.m. for a period of eight hours and the results displayed in the table below. Scatter plot for the data is shown, um, along with the residual plot, which suggests that a nonlinear regression might be a better model. Okay, so we can see clearly from the data, nonlinear form, the residual plot is certainly confirming that um, a linear uh, model was possibly not the best model. We have a clear curve in the residual plot. Um, so we've got the least squares regression line plotted. Its equation um, to three significant figures is y equals 28.8 minus 3.29x. And the coefficient of determination here is r squared is 0.81. So again, it's still strong um, correlation, but we can see it's not the best model. We must be able to get a better model with a much um, with a stronger correlation than this. Okay, so I've put the data in my CAS over here, and we're now going to look at um, I've also, as I said, I've plotted the data here. If I just put my regression on here as well, so menu 462, um, so I can see that, so that when I do the data transformation, I can see it change. Okay, so let's apply the reciprocal transformation to the time variable. Okay, so I need a new column of data. I'm going to call it um, recip time. Sorry, it's slow typing on the non qwerty keyboard. Okay, so reciprocal of the time. Again, I don't need to enter it all in manually. I can get the formulas to do it for me. So I want this column to be equal to one divided by the time column. Okay, so pressing my variable button, I can choose time from here, or you could just type time. Okay, so this whole column, reciprocal time, so down the bottom here, you can see the formula in full. Reciprocal time equals one divided by time. All right, and so we've got that. So you can see that um, when time is one, reciprocal of time is still one. When time is two, reciprocal of that is one over two. When time is three, reciprocal of that is one over three, etc. Okay, so let's go back to the scatter plot. So rather than have time on the horizontal axis, we're now going to change that to reciprocal of time. And remember, we talked about this one back in that introduction to data transformation video. It because we're making all the larger numbers relatively smaller. Um, the whole plot will flip around, but we also saw that we got a much better fit here. It's quite close to that line actually, and coefficient of determination is 0.96. Um, previously it was 0.81, so we've seen quite a big improvement. This is certainly a much stronger model. Okay, so again, we can see the regression equation here on the screen, okay, and the equation to three significant figures is y equals 3.85 plus 29.9x, but remember x is no longer x, the horizontal axis is no longer time, it is 1 divided by time, so x is, should become 1 over x. So therefore our equation is this, the temperature is 3.85 plus 29.9 times 1 divided by the number of hours. Okay, and we're getting this much stronger model. Okay, let's have a look at um, 
A quick example using this same model, use the transformed model above to predict the temperature correct to one decimal place at 10.30 p.m. Okay, let's go back up to how our time was measured. Okay, so time is in hours after 6 p.m. So therefore 10.30 p.m. is four and a half hours after 6 p.m. Okay, so 10.30 p.m. is going to be when time is 4.5. Okay, so we need to put that into our equation. So we're going to put that in place of the time or hours as it's written in the equation up there. So our predicted temperature, sorry, is going to be 3.85 plus 29.9 times 1 divided by 4.5. All right, calculator page. So 3.85 plus 29.9 times 1 divided by 4.5. And we get a predicted temperature of 10 point, uh, 1 decimal place, so 10.5 degrees. Again, does my answer make sense? I'm making a prediction for time is 4.5 definitely should be somewhere between 11 and 9 the temperature and it is 10.5 so all good. Okay let's have a look at applying the transformation to the y variable so 1 over y equals a plus bx um, and as I said it's still a compressing um, transformation but at the same time it will also flip um, things around but that doesn't matter that's catered for in the adjusted equation and we're still talking about the same variable. Apply a reciprocal transformation to the following data by transforming the y variable, which in this case is intensity. So we've got x is the distance and y is the intensity. So we want to transform the y variable this time. Okay, in my CADs here, I've already entered this data in. Let's just let me open that document up. Okay, so distance and intensity. Fit a, so we want to um, find the reciprocal of the intensity. So I'm gonna get a new column in my data in my spreadsheet. So reciprocal of intensity. Apologies for that. Okay, reciprocal of the intensity. Um, in the formula bar we're going to write equals and we've got one divided by intensity so you can press your variable button to get intensity. Okay. And so there we've got 1 over the intensity. You can see that literally there where the intensity is 90. Reciprocal of the intensity is 1 over 90. 60, 1 over 60. 28, 1 over 28. Okay, so we now want to fit a least squares regression line. Okay, let's draw a plot. Let's draw the original plot first. So I'm going to insert a data page. Let's put the distance versus the intensity. Okay, so we're seeing that nice clear curve, um, linear model possibly not best, let's put the linear model on, so menu 4, 6, 2, okay there it is there, this time um, coefficient of determination only 0.58, um, so not particularly strong um, correlation, it's certainly not bad in the scheme of correlations, but um, let's see if we could get it better than that. Okay, so we now want to change the intensity, so the y variable, instead of being intensity, it's going to be reciprocal of the intensity, or 1 over intensity. Alright, we get a much better fit. We've gone to something now with a um, coefficient of determination of 0.96. Okay, so significant improvement. Um, we want to give the coefficients correct to three decimal places, okay, in the regression equation. And remember, it's not y, it's 1 over y now, reciprocal of y and y is intensity. So my equation is going to be 1 over intensity is equal to, now we want three decimal places here, so that is 0 0.007 plus 0 0.007 plus 0.008 times distance. State the coefficient of determination for the transformed data, correct to two decimal places. Okay, so we've got that on screen here. R squared equals 0 0.96. Remember, if you're not seeing R squared, menu 6 for settings and make sure the diagnostics box is ticked. You should only need to do that once and then you'll always see R squared. Um, use the equation from A to predict the intensity, correct to two decimal places, at a distance of 20 metres. Okay, so distance of 20, we want to sub that into our equation up here. 
So we know that 1 over the intensity is equal to 0 0.06, sorry, 0. Apologies, just dropped my pen. 0 0.07 plus 0 0.008 times 20. Now again, like the previous um, video where we did the log transformation, you could work that right hand side of the equation out. So let me just put a calculator page in here. Um, and then solve the equation either using your CAS or um, by hand. So we've got 0 0.007 plus 0 0.008 times 20. And so 1 over the intensity is 0 0.167. Okay. And then um, you can either manipulate that yourself. Oops, sorry. That we now know that this means that the intensity is going to be 1 over 0 0.167, which will be... 1 divided by that, 5 point, two decimal places, 5.99. And the unit seems to be candle power. 5.99 candle powers, candle power, not sure. <laughs> um, again, you don't need to do the solving manually by hand. You've got your equation up here you could solve that immediately. So menu 3, 1, solving uh, 1 over, don't bother typing intensity in here, 1 over y equals 0 0.007 plus 0 0.008 times 20, solve that for y, and you get your same solution. Okay, so you can straight away, once you've written down your equation, then solve it for, um, use your CAS to solve it. Can I please ask that you take the step to solve, to write down the equation? Because once again, we've talked about this previously, you cannot earn consequential marks if there's no working shown. So if you've got your equation in part A wrong, and all you do is write an answer in part C, you won't get the answer correct in part C. If, however, you write out the line where we can see that you've substituted distance of 20 into your incorrect equation and that your answer is consistent with that incorrect equation, then we can award you the mark consequentially. So please, please, please write down the equation. Okay, you've got nothing to lose. There's plenty of time in the further maths exam. You're not in such a rush that you need to not write things down. Okay, so um, this box outlines how to apply the data transformation for the reciprocal transformation. Um, we've been through that in the video. Um, the work for today is exercise 5D, the reciprocal transformation.